Well, with me right now from United Mutual is their board secretary, Maggie Blackwell. And today we're going to talk about landscaping. Yes, we had a really good meeting this morning. Um, we had uh, Bruce Hartley, who has had four months now as our head of service. Mm -hmm. And he says we are responding and keeping track of requests. We've had staff changes. The requests have dropped down, and the closure rate has increased. The open tickets have dropped down, so things are really looking better. Uh, we're catching up on the calendar of landscape events, which, which is going to make residents a lot less irritated. When they see us out there working, they get some comfort that things at last yeah. will be restored. So, very good. So that looks very good. So one of the issues, breezeway and understair planting, and uh, these are for the, the two-story right, buildings, right? Right, right. Yeah. Casa Linda and Casa Blancas mm -hmm. have a staircase from the ground level. Right. And behind that staircase mm -hmm. is about a five by three, I would guess, not being an engineer, five by three foot a rectangle of what was originally dirt. It was there to allow planting by residents in okay. that particular area to spruce up that area. Otherwise, it is a nothing there. And mm -hmm. so most residents in those buildings do get together and do put plants in them. Some of them put pots in them. Some of them park bicycles there, which is perfectly okay. And some of them put fake plants down there uh, or just even redwood chips or something. Okay. But, but it's up to the residents what they want there. Um, mm -hmm. Recently, we had some residents in one building and none of them wanted to take care of it anymore. So they demanded that United plant something mm -hmm. there. But since that is the original condition of the building, then anything that we do will be an alteration by the owner. So, okay. so it would be a, a billable service. Mm -hmm. But we do offer, we will do, um, we'll put pavers in or we'll put uh, gravel or okay. chopped granite or something like that or some of them will cement over. That runs between three and maybe five hundred dollars for ripping out whatever is in there now and for placing in something there. But it has to be the members that request and sign for this, mm -hmm. not just a renter. It okay. has to be members because this is this is an alteration to a member's area. Right. Now if that was request made, would everyone that would be involved, uh, however many units, all have to agree to it and chip yes, in on the price. Yes, they would have to agree to all the owners right. of those units, those eight units would have to agree. Uh, whether they agree to all chip in or not, the bill has to be paid by mm -hmm. someone there. Right. Um, but, but they wanted United to pay for it and United to be available to pay for that any time any resident mm -hmm. uh, abandons it. Well. We, we don't have an extra $50,000 a year to do that. And besides, that would make a permanent change for residents who might not want a permanent right. change. So we have to be very careful when we touch those. So we have to treat it as a member request. Okay, all right. Now, uh, something else has been talked about and over the past maybe year and a half or so, and that is species specific tree trimming. Oh, this is fabulous. Yes, this is fabulous. Um, Bruce and Bob Merget uh, spoke about that this morning. It is so good. We are on a 34 month cycle mm -hmm. and the Arbor Pro has all the trees in it now so we can be even more specific. Some trees like a carrot wood throws off all those little fruits every year and the members get really stressed out because they can't get their walkers through there safely if it's close to a walk and so on and it makes a big mess and it's a hardship for them. If we are specific, specific species mm -hmm. trimming, we can plan those trees to be trimmed at just the right time so that when they pop, they won't pop out so many of these yes. things. Yeah. And, and so we will 
rotate that, we will exchange that for a tree that really doesn't need trimming every three years. So, so we mm -hmm. put these frequent trimmers, blend them in with the not so frequent needed trimmers and we come out with an even allocation of work time and, and so on. But this will be a wonderful event. There are, there are queen palms, weeping fig, uh, the canary island pine throws out uh, pine needles like, like a shedding dog, yeah. you know, and people go crazy and say, oh, it's filling up all my, my gutters and my patio and I'm going nuts. And so we could do this just, I mean, the tree needs to be trimmed basically every year to do this, mm -hmm. but it would be a quick trim job and could be done in that order. Okay. And that is a wonderful benefit of the Arbor Pro because we, we now know where all of those trees are and how close they are to every building and every walk. So we can make good plans now. Yeah, very good. Yeah. So something else is a, a landscape maintenance manual. Right, uh, this is the landscape maintenance manual and this is the logo which they put on it in 2011. I think it's really cute. Before that it was just a green page. Uh, this is has the regulations and so on for uh, plantings, uh, resident plantings, the yellow stake program, uh, resident abandonment and so on of, of their plantings and this this is to was a guide for, but it was one resolution passed here, one over here, one here, one here, and mm -hmm. nothing actually jived together. And the basic one was the first yellow stake program, which was for only for dwarf fruit trees. And it was quite clear that you needed a yellow stake to plant a fruit tree, and the okay. fruit tree must be a dwarf. Because we can't stand big trees everywhere, right, and so right. on. And and with with your taking of the yellow stakes and demarking the spot, you tell maintenance landscape maintenance to stay away. That you mm -hmm. will single handedly manage this. If you do not, and we find it's out of out of compliance, then compliance can come after you for litter or whatever breaking breaking okay. this rule and so on and. Alas, we'll give you a timeline to fix it up and that would be okay. If not, we have to find you or, or something like that or get it as a chargeable service if we do it. But, but the rest of the manual, all these other resolutions are very unclear. They say members may plant around their units, but they don't say within six feet or three feet or okay. 10 feet. And over the years, I w we were walking around today in a couple of areas, and we must have passed 20 yards where the, the owner has now claimed everything out to the path or everything out to the street. This is simply not possible. Um, with the new delineation, with the new landscape manage, manual, we will set out the guidelines. Okay. Uh, theoretically, the guidelines were first the sprinklers for the lawn. All right, the sprinkler comes out for the lawn. Here's mm -hmm. your home. Here's the sprinkler coming out for the lawn. Those are on here. And then there was a one foot dirt edge so the mows could come by without hitting the sprinklers. Well, there are several folks who have now planted their plants out past the sprinklers and over into the grassy areas. And their, their plants are creeping and creeping and creeping further and further and some of them just just plant it past all, all the way, yeah. you know. There are some that are eight or 10 feet too far. That is too far. Um, we can bill you for restoring that property to United, or we, we may not choose to do that, but take forewarning those of you that have extended your plantings. They better look really, really, really good and very good care, or, or it will draw our attention or a complaint from okay. a neighbor. And this is one of the issues we have to deal with on this uh, because the original idea for any resident planting was you get the okay first. And that's mm -hmm. what the yellow stake was about. And everyone mm -hmm. says you get the okay first. Well, people aren't getting the okay first. They just go out and they, they were, there may or may not now be 
be handing over a plan of what they want. You know, like I want, I want this here, and I want this here, and I want a, these things, a podocarpus here, and heavenly bamboo here, and this, and this, and this. And so that we know what, we can get an idea that it is actually going to look nice yeah. in the area, and they can mm -hmm. control it. Alas, what has happened in some areas is they have a sidewalk over here, and so they planted bushes that have grown very tall here, so they're no longer interested in them. So then they plant mm -hmm. the next bushes <laughs> out here, and they get very tall, and so they just keep creeping out. Each season they add another row of plantings out, and, and really what needs to happen is the innermost ones needed to be trimmed back and repaired, and they right. didn't do that. Okay. So some of them have kind of a rat's nest there, which is, which is not good. Okay, and of course it affects landscaping and how oh, yes, their it does. efficiency as well. They, the mowers can't mow, and, and some areas look so deserted, it's questionable. You know, is anyone still taking care of these or not? Yeah. And so we, we can either refer them to compliance, which is what usually happens, or under this new one, you need permission for when you get your yellow stakes and want to do planting. You need permission from the landscape department, and then it goes to the committee, just like uh, the alterations mm -hmm. for buildings right. do, like you want to put in a skylight. It goes through several steps, and that's what we may need to do. It will at least okay. get us some consistency and organization. Um, last year, everything grew like a weed, so a lot of residents' things went wild. I've seen some beautiful redos. Some residents have torn out their old stuff, and using the same talent which they used at first, they have planted new wonderful gardens. So kudos to those people. and. To everyone else who's trying to please their mm -hmm. neighbors and themselves, that's good. But don't keep creeping out into uh, other territory. Okay. And uh, this manual, you're looking at? Right. This is going redoing, to be re uh, redone. Okay. Uh, the, r a few of the resolutions will need to be superseded and canceled when we complete this new one. Okay. And we do have. Uh, we do have a great amount of work done by staff. This was a terrific task by staff to put, to put together the new suggested amount, and we, we accepted almost all, many of the pages today, but we do have the particular ones about resident plantings and so on that we need to deal with very carefully in the committee meeting next time. Mm -hmm. That'll be in April. Uh, so that we are sure not to infringe on anyone's right or put anyone in a bad spot. Okay. Or, or try to say United will take over and do everything for nothing. This is, this is, when you return, when you abandon your garden or you give your garden back, uh, because you have had it, it is your responsibility to return it in a, a untilled condition, kind of like. And so United doesn't have to go in and haul right. out all those nasty rose bushes. We had to walk around some that uh, an owner had planted right next to the walkway, and they'd been trimmed back, but even so, it was kind of frightening. So, <laughs> so be careful what you do with your stuff, and all right. keep it tidy. All right, very good. Thank you for coming on. All right. We appreciate it, and we'll see you next time. Okay, thank you. And uh, remember, folks, United's regular meeting is next Tuesday, 9.30 in the boardroom. We'll be right back.